Thank you. Um, it is indeed uh, an honor to have been invited to this panel um, to discuss fiscal policy, a topic on which uh, both Francesco and I have worked, sometimes alone, sometimes together, and sometimes disagreeing. And uh, I think we are at a juncture uh, for the world economy, and for Europe in particular, where the issue is absolutely first order, so I'm delighted that we have this panel. I thought I would make five quick points, which are going to overlap a bit with your introduction. The first one is that I, I'm fairly confident that interest rates are going to be low for a long time. The reason I'm confident is first, this is not something which is due to the crisis, this is something which started long before, is a long trend since the uh, mid-80s. And the factors which are behind, we don't know exactly what they are, but they don't look like they should reverse anytime soon. The second is obviously the yield curves, which are negative for a good part of the maturity structure. And then the additional information is actually from option prices. So the yield curve just gives you the average, the average belief but you can look at the price of options. And the price of options suggests that the investors, at least, are totally convinced that it will last. I mean, just to give you a number, the, the implied probability that the market puts on euro-level interest rates being more than 3% in nominal terms uh, in five years is 1%. So people are putting their money there. They could be wrong, but they are putting their money there. The last point I would say is, from the point of view of governments, which worry about the fact that interest rates may increase, and they can lock in these rates. They can issue at the standard maturity, average maturity that they have, eight to 10 years, and lock in these rates. And if the interest rates increase, uh, they will be protected. So I think we have to work on the assumption that not for sure, nothing is ever for sure, but that's the environment in which we're going to be for a long time. So that was the first point. The, Next two points are about the general implications of this, and you've mentioned them. The first one is this puts sharper limits on what monetary policy can do, both with respect to the so-called zero lower bound, but what we now call the effective lower bound, and maybe even more fundamentally uh, on the fact that negative real rates, even if we could achieve them, probably become perverse at some point. This is the discussion about the so-called reversal rate, and we may not be very far from it. So even if we could break the uh, effective lower bound, it's not clear that monetary policy should do much more. This was reflected in the discussion last week at the ECB, where clearly some people believe that there is you know, not a whole lot of room uh, left. So that's the second point, and we all agree. The uh, converse of this, which I think is very important, the third point is that this puts softer limits on fiscal policy. I mean, the fiscal costs of debt are smaller, nearly arithmetically, and the fiscal risks, the probability that we run to levels of debt service which we cannot um, uh, pay for, is lower. So that, you know, whatever definition of fiscal space you want to use, um, this means that there is much more fiscal space than there used to be, and I think we have to accept that. Uh, and so, less room for money, more room for fiscal. What are the implications for the... I'm going to talk about the euro area as a whole, and we may come back to Italy, but I'll leave it aside for the time being. And these are my last two, my last two points. But fiscal consolidation, which is still very much on the agenda at the euro level in terms of the rules, uh, has high costs and very low benefits. And in an environment in which monetary policy cannot help, and private demand is weak, if you do 1% fiscal consolidation, use a multiplier of 1, we may come back to what multipliers are, but 1, uh, this means output will go down by 1%, which means unemployment will go up. That's costly. That's costly economically, that's costly humanly, that's costly politically at this point. What benefits will you get? Well, if you do a computation, you'll find that the debt will increase more slowly, but what happens to the debt-to-GDP ratio is actually ambiguous. It could well be that the decrease in output is larger in proportion than the decrease in debt. So the debt ratio may actually go up. For a country like Italy, or a country which is 100%, actually you get an increase in the debt to GDP ratio. So you get less output, more unemployment, and not much gain on the, uh, 
on the fiscal debt side. So I think the, the message here is fiscal consolidation is not of the essence at this point. Uh, let's wait until monetary policy has space to do it, in which case it can help, obviously, and that's what it has done in the past. Let's concentrate on other things. And in many countries, the level of spending is too high, the composition of spending is not ideal. Let's concentrate on these things, which don't have this adverse effect on output. So this would be my fourth point. And the fifth point, the final one, is that I'm talking about a world in which there is no recession, which is just a slump, but no recession. If there is a euro-wide recession, then it is obvious to me that there'll be a need for fiscal coordination. Because, because of the demand spillovers, the fact that when you have a fiscal expansion, it helps largely the others and not you, the decentralized solution is that countries will not do enough. And there I think it's absolutely essential to think about this issue before it's needed. And if there is a recession, there'll be a need for a fiscal expansion. And I hope we see it, although I'm not absolutely sure, sure we will see it, but we should. Let me stop here in the first round. Well, you were very much involved, Olivier, in the discussions, negotiations, etc., that led to the coordinated fiscal expansion uh, in, that's agreed in April 2009, and that included Germany, of course, at the time, uh, with a significant fiscal stimulus. Uh, now, I hope we don't need to have the same circumstances uh, that require um, that kind of coordination but um, it's something to keep in mind. Our second uh, panelist will be Alberto Alessina. Thank you. It's, a, it's an enormous pleasure and an honor to be here to honor Francesco. I would really on Corriere.